Hey guys, in this video, we are going to start the new chapter, chapter 4, Chemical Composition in a Cell. We are going to look into the inorganic compound first, which is the water. Okay, water. Huh? Now, water molecule, we all know that water molecule is actually H2O. It has two H and one O inside. If we zoom inside, we can actually see the interaction between the water molecule. The water molecule, it is a polar molecule. Okay, water molecule is a polar molecule. I hope you guys still remember what is the meaning of polar molecule. Polar molecule means the atoms inside the water, it carries some partially charged, like oxygen, it carries partially negative charge. Like hydrogen, it carries partially positive charge. Okay, so same goes to the rest of the molecule. Oxygen carries partially negative charge. Hydrogen carries partially positive charge. Now, this positive and negative charge, they tend to attract each other. Positive and negative mark, or not? So they tend to attract each other. So the force that form between the hydrogen and the oxygen is called the hydrogen bond. You are going to learn this in your Form 4 chemistry, okay? But uh, for now, I'm going to teach you a little bit on the hydrogen bond. So what is the hydrogen bond? Hydrogen bond is actually a force of attractions between a hydrogens and a more electronegative atom. Okay, it means that it is a partially negative atom. Let me give you some example, guys. For example, we have the hydrogens, okay, form a bond with uh, oxygen, okay? So hydrogen is partially positive and oxygen is partially negative. So they form a bond, we call this bond as a hydrogen bond, okay? The next one is hydrogen, they form a bond with the nitrogens. Hydrogen is partially positive, nitrogen partially negative. So the bond is hydrogen bond. Hydrogen form a bond with F, the fluorine. Hydrogen is partially positive, Fluorine is partially negative. So the bond in the middle is hydrogen bond. So any atom with a slightly negative form a bond together with the hydrogen, we call it a hydrogen bond. All right. So what's so special about this hydrogen bond? Please take notes that when other substances or other molecules, they can form a hydrogen bond with the water molecule. When they can form a hydrogen bond, okay, when they can form a hydrogen bond, then it means that they are able to dissolve in the water, okay? They can form the hydrogen bond, then they can dissolve in the water. So the polarity of the water molecule, it has a partially negative charge and partially positive charge, make the water molecule a universal solvent, okay? Water molecule is a universal solvent because a lot of substances, they can form a bond with the water molecule and they can dissolve inside the water molecule. So water molecule is known as the universal solvent, okay? The universal solvent. So universal solvent means many, okay, many solutes can dissolve, it can dissolve in water, okay? Water as a solvent. So this is the meaning of universal solvent. So if we look at the properties of the water, you will see that, okay, the textbook always say that a water molecule, there are polar molecule and universal solvent. And these two properties, they are actually related because water molecule is, is a polar molecule. It makes the water as a universal solvent, okay? Polar molecule and universal solvent. Now, besides that, water molecule also attached to each other through a cohesive force and to the surface through an adhesive force. What is the meaning of cohesive force and adhesive force? Now let's draw out the water molecule again in this box.
Now, as I mentioned before, water molecule it is a polar molecule. It means that the hydrogen, it carry a partially positive charge and oxygen carry partially negative charge. Same goes to other water molecule, fair not? So the positive charge and negative charge, they form an attraction force. And those attraction force is known as the cohesive force, okay, cohesive force. So this force is known as the cohesive force. Okay, cohesive force. So what is the meaning of cohesive force? Cohesive force means when two water molecules, they try to attach each other. So that force is known as the cohesive force. So you might want to ask me, teacher, just now you mentioned this force, this is a bond and we call it as a hydrogen bond. Can we call this bond as a hydrogen bond as well? Yes, we can call it as a hydrogen bond as well. We can call this bond as a hydrogen bond as well. But when it comes to the force between two same water molecule, we call this force as cohesive force. Now, normally when it comes to the force between two water molecules, uh, we use cohesive force rather than hydrogen bond in biology. Okay, we use cohesive force. Now, what exactly is cohesive force? Try to imagine. Okay, let's say you have a surface. Okay, let's say you have a surface. Now you have one water droplets here and then another water droplets here. Okay, so we have two water droplets here. Now, if we bring the two drops of water droplets closer to each other, what will happen? Okay, think about this. If we let the two water molecule come closer to each other, they form a larger water droplets by mixing together, merging together, correct not? So why is this happening? Because there is cohesive force. The water molecule that tend to stick to each other and then form a larger water droplets. So this is due to cohesive force. All right. So then there's another force called adhesive force. Adhesive force adhe. This word is actually come from adhere. Adhere means sticking to a surface. Correct not? It means there's an object sticking to a surface. For example, like the glue adhere to the surface. Okay, the glue adhere to the surface. This is the glue. Okay, this is the wall. Okay, the surface. So adhesive force is come from adhere. This word. Now, try to imagine if you use your fingers, if you use one of your five fingers to touch the water droplets, what will happen next? If you touch the water droplets, this water is going to stick on your fingers, or not? When you try to move your fingers, the water droplets will follow your fingers and move. Why is this happening? Because the water molecule, they have a sticky properties. They have the sticky properties, which means that they will stick to most of the surface. Okay, so this force that formed between the water molecule and the surface. Okay, like to a surface. This force is known as the adhesive force. Okay, adhesive force. All right, so this is the meaning of adhesive force. Now, students always confused by these two words, these two forces, the cohesive force and the adhesive force. So how can we memorize this one? Like I mentioned before, adhesive force is come from a word called adhere. So if you know the meaning of adhere, you know that it will stick on the surface, correct not? Now, how about cohesive force? For cohesive force, it comes from a word cohere. Cohere means sticking together. Then when I mentioned sticking together, together, it means that two water molecules must be the same water molecule, huh? stick together, and that force is called cohesive force. All right, cohesive and adhesive force. Simple only. All right, next one. Another properties of the water is it has a high specific heat capacity. So you guys are going to learn specific heat capacity in the future. Let me briefly teach you what is specific heat capacity first. Okay, so water has high specific heat capacity means they can absorb, okay, they can absorb a lot of heat, okay, they can absorb a lot of heat with just small amount of water. So water has very, very high specific heat capacity. It has a high specific 
heat capacity than any other liquid. So water is very special. It has it can absorb a lot, a lot of heat, okay, than any other liquid. That's why we don't use oil as a coolant in the engine. We normally we use the water to cool down the engine, right? We put in the water to cool down the engine. So in other industrial area, we also use water to cool down the machine. We, we don't use oil, we don't use alcohol, we don't use other liquid because water has the highest specific heat capacity, which can absorb a lot of heat from the machine and cool down the machine. So how high is the specific heat capacity of the water? Water, it has 4.2 kilojoule per kg per degree Celsius. So what is the meaning? If you look at the unit here, you should be able to understand what is the meaning of this number. Now, for those who have no idea, maybe you guys can write this down. 4.2 kJ, kilojoule, kJ is the unit for energy. So in this case, we are trying to refer to heat energy. It means that 4.2 kilojoule of heat energy Okay, is needed to increase the temperature of one kg, one kg of water by one degree Celsius. Okay, if you want to increase one kg of water by one degree Celsius, you are going to use 4.2 kilojoule of heat energy and this amount is actually a lot this heat energy is actually a lot so this is the meaning of high specific heat capacity all right guys with all these properties that i've mentioned and explained just now it's actually very very useful in our body as well as in other living things body so let's look at this one what is the importance of the water in the cell the water is very, very important in the capillary actions because water has cohesion and adhesion force. Now, the thing is, what is the meaning of capillary actions? Let me briefly talk about the capillary actions. Huh? Now, let's say you have a, a glass of water. If you put a tissue paper inside the water, what will happen? The water will be absorbed, correct not? The water will be absorbed by the tissue. But not only that, the water will start to move up. Okay, it will start to move up. So this moving up, this action is actually called the capillary action. Okay, capillary action. Okay, why capillary action is so important in the sound or in any other living things? Because it can help the living things to absorb the water, especially for the plants. So the plants like this, okay, they can use the capillary actions to absorb the water and brings the water to the top of the plants. All right, so this is the meaning of capillary action. Okay, next one. Since water, they are polar molecule and they can let most of the substance, most of the solute to dissolve inside it. So they are the universal solvent. This universal solvent allow most of the nutrients to dissolve inside the body. So it can help us to transport the nutrients in the body. The next thing is support. Support due to the turgor pressure that form inside the sound. Now let's say uh, this is the sound. A plant sound. A plant sound has a big vacuole. This big vacuole will fill up with water, right not? When the vacuole is filled up with water, it will create a turgor pressure, pushing outwards, just like a balloon, and just like a balloon. If you have a flexi balloon and you pump in some water inside, okay, the balloon is going to be become bigger. When the balloon become bigger, okay, when the balloon become bigger, it will become hard. Why? Because there is a turgor pressure pushing the balloons outwards, okay? So this is known as the turgor pressure. So same goes to the sound. This turgor pressure let the sound become harder and this can provide the support to most of the 
herbaceous plants, for example, like the grass, okay, they can stand upright. The plants that can stand upright because of the turgor pressure inside the cell. Okay, so this is the meaning of turgor pressure. The next thing is water, it has high specific heat capacity. It can absorb a lot of heat from our body. So it can help us to maintain the body temperature. When you feel hot, what you drink? You drink water, right? Okay, so why water? Because it has high specific heat capacity. <laughs>